Nityanandam. My name is Mani Tadugananda and I'm from Singapore. I'm a spiritual entrepreneur and in this video I'm going to share with you some of the fascinating experiences and connections my child had with a living incarnation, Bhagavan Sri Nityananda Paramashiva, fondly known as Swamiji. See, Swamiji came into my life when Kai was about three years old, in 2006. My son, at that time, uh, was really, really fascinated with all the story about enlightened beings, especially all the happening that uh, I used to share with him during the bedtimes before he falls asleep. I would tell him all the fascinating encounters and happening uh, of Swamiji in his life and all the enlightened master he had met. So he used to listen with all the fascination and enthusiasm. And at a very young age, he is already living in the mystical world of the enlightened masters. And I can tell you he has incredible imaginations. Uh, and he used to listen to those stories with such a fascination and awareness. So for, it went on for many years and so by the time Kai was six years old, he has created such a strong desire to meet Swamiji in person. And it happened that year in November 2009 when Swamiji came for a one-day Kapataru program in Singapore where I booked the whole family to attend the program, one-day program. And that was the very first time Kai was initiated by Swamiji in the Kapataru event. Let me describe the scene. It was just a very sweet moment because even when I think about it, I had this tinkle in my eyes. So that day, um, as you know, in the Kaputaru, there is a darshan preparation and all the kids, young kids, were asked to leave the hall uh, so that they don't create noise and disturb the adults. So my son was asked to leave the hall to have a walk outside before um, the darshan. So basically what happened, I was told when he realized that Swamiji has already come onto the stage for the darshan and he ran all the way to the hall. But because the darshan hasn't started, he had asked to come into the hall because he wanted to meet his master, Swamiji. He ran up and down um, through the different doors because the volunteers would not allow him to come in uh, because uh, the darshan preparation was still going on. The adults were having meditation. And the poor boy was thoroughly devastated because he was not able to come in to meet the master whom he had grown fondly over the last three years. So eventually, he was crying, you know, begging literally the volunteers to let him come in. And they couldn't do it until the Russian started. So by the time the Russian started, he ran to me. I was sitting right in front in the first row, waiting to go up. And I was surprised that he was crying and I asked him what happened. He said, they wouldn't let me come and see the master, see my master. <laughs> so I said, no, 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 now you can see him. So, so we went up together to the stage. The moment he saw Swamiji, it's like he just ran to him and hugged him so tightly, like he's going to miss him, he's going to miss seeing him. And I was, I was so thoroughly surprised because, you know, for a child who felt that he almost got denied to seeing his master. So there was a scene, it was so sweet uh, as a mother for me to see, to witness my child having that deep connection with Swamiji in the very, very first session, first encounter. 
So that went on for a few more years after the initiation in Kapataru to 2012. Kai was blessed to attend 21 days program with him uh, in a program called Engineers for the first time. He was able to attend a 21 day program with Swamiji along with me. And in the program, on the last day of the darshan, so Swamiji was on the stage giving darshan for different disciples and devotees. While the darshan music was playing loud and all the dancing, all the kitans was going on, Kai suddenly just stood out and started dancing and doing belly dance in front of Swamiji. And it was so funny and I was feeling, you know, a little bit embarrassed but also feeling very funny out of his that innocent space. So by the time Swamiji noticed what he was doing, he just stood up in his big blissful smile, took out his Rudraksha belt and called Kai up to the stage and gifted him his Rudraksha belt. And I was so in awe with what spontaneously happened in front of me. Uh, so Kai was blessed with Swamiji's Rudraksha belt. Um, the only child who happens to receive a Rudraksha belt uh, from uh, an incarnation just by doing belly dancing in front of him. So that was another sweet experience. Now, I want to fast forward because there are too many incidences, but some of the critical highlight in Kai's life in connection with Swamiji. I would say the most fascinating change after he attended um, Mahasada Shivohom, during Mahasada Shivohom and after Mahasada Shivohom in December 2017. So in Mahasada Shivohom, one of the events is that we visit Swamiji's hometown, uh, Arunachala, and the temple. When we were at the temple, Kai told me he heard the voice of Arunagiri Yogeshwara calling him. We're at the front of the temple. But Kai heard his voice asking him to come to the back of the temple. So he went there and I followed him because I didn't know where exactly is the temple of Arunagiri Yogeshwara, the shrine of Arunagiri Yogeshwara. We're looking around for it. And he just followed by listening to the voice of Arunagiri Yogeshwara. So we found that temple and of course we went to offer our prayer and respect. And then Kai just suddenly went to sit at the steps uh, near the shrine. The steps where Swamiji used to sit with Arunagiri Yogeshwara. So he sat there with a, a group of devotees who are also taking a rest there. Now, he shared with me something miraculous happened when he was sitting with Arunagiri Yogeshwara at that steps. He told me that in that meditative state, when he sat there, he saw the energy of Parashiva and Parashakti, the bow of energy, enter into him and merge into him. At that moment, it was the gift of Arunagiri Yogeshwara to give him the initiation. So that child was truly blessed to have a mystical experiences. Um, in the Divine Holy Land of Arunachala. So during the Mahasada Jivahom, he had also another fascinating experience. When he was lying and have a sleep in one of the meditation, 
lying on the floor. When he woke up, he told me that he, he found a small tiny retracture was materialized on his palm. So I want to sh show you the rudraksha. So this is a rudraksha. There are two. I will share with you the first rudraksha, how it was materialized. It was during Mahasada Shivohum when he was sleeping in a mid deep meditative state. So he found that on um, near the palm in the fingers. So I kept it. And then the second uh, materialization happened just last year, 2018. Just a few months after Mahasara Shivahum, uh, where Skandamata, the enlightened child blessed by Swamiji, came visiting uh, Singapore Adinam. So Swamiji told Kai to visit uh, Singapore Adinam and meet Skandamata. So he went and we spent almost half a day with her, and she was there playing um, and also attending uh, the weekend guru ku and all that. So Kaya would spend some time with her and interestingly, the second Rudraksha got materialized, okay? That time, the second Rudraksha got materialized at the toes of Kai. just being in the presence of Skandamata. And so now it became a pair, two Rudraksha materialized by Kai. One with Swamiji in his breathing space and second in the breathing space of Skanamata. So, and you can tell definitely only in that innocence deep connection space that uh, such mystical experiences can happen for Kai. So, then the next fascinating changes happened after Mahasada Shivohum. Swamiji had actually awakened Kai's past life bio memory. Kai had a past life connection with Swamiji during the Minakshi period. So Kai happened to be a chef and he used to cook for all the deities and obviously Devi Minakshi. So in his bio memory, he knows some of the sacred secret of Ayurveda. It means ability to know the science of food as medicine. So that uh, power start getting expressed to Kai. He was able to remember some of the Ayurvedic uh, recipe or formula for simple ailments. So he was able to download directly from Swamiji how to prepare simple recipe, I would say, they call it Aushada, for simple um, ailments or diseases. So that is another fascinating discovery that I, I found because I asked him, how do you know all this, what herbs to do and how to energize it? He said, Swamiji just showed me and I just, you know, connect with him and everything just happened. So that really, really, you know, made me in awe with this happening, you know, knowing my child is now able to remember some of his past life memory, bio memory. So these are just some of the very uh, fascinating incidents. I like to share one of the cutest incident that I observed with Swamiji, you know, in relation with Kai. See, the relationship Kai had with Swamiji is like like a cosmic father and a son, and you can really see the the deep compassion and space that Swamiji holds for Kai. I tell you, he, he's always so encouraging and giving him space to explore, make mistakes and also learn from the mistakes. He would tell him, 
he'll connect with him and tell him, you know, good job. Even during the PIRA examination, he will say, do your best, you know. And all that constantly giving him a lot of encouragement in the telepathic way. So, and the fascinating part is, there was one in the Guru Puja, and Kai prepared mm, a special meal for Navadium for Swamiji. And during the offering of the puja, he literally saw a white hand, Swamiji's hand, came through and took the Navadium and ate it. And and he shared with me, this is what he saw, Swamiji enjoying the food in the Naivedium. So, only when, you know, he shared with me, I'm able to comprehend, you know, that his connection with Swamiji is at a much more mystical level, which is beyond our human logic. And there was once, in, during puja, again, Kai saw Swamiji fed him with a wooden spoon like a sparkling star. A star which is illumined by itself is sparkling. And put it inside Kai's mouth during the puja. And Kai swallowed it and he went straight into his Anandaganda. Okay? And he told me that that sparkling star is an indicator of hunger. Whenever he's low in energy, the star will start to become dim. And when he's fully charged, the star will be bright. It means he doesn't need to eat. It's almost like regulating his diet and how much he eats. So that was a very fascinating uh, sharing that Kai told me about that star and he also told me that Swamiji by putting that star create a very uh, strong stomach lining inside him which protects him from eating the wrong food uh, from outside so how you know would I comprehend if you based on the human logic the kind of level of connection the trust the innocence that a child have with an enlightened master. It is beyond this physical realm. So there was once also just last year uh, we happened to go to JB for an event, uh, one of the road show. Uh, I would say world tour for causing Opa Aramashi go home. Um, the event was held in Johor Bahru, and the day I was supposed to take Kai along to do some demo, the uh, demo, but unfortunately, he had a asthma attack the day before, and he had to go to see a doctor. So the doctor gave him some. Uh, gas to inhale to uh, stabilize his breathing and when he came back he told me that uh, Swamiji connected to him and asked me not to go to Jaili then I was not able to understand why you know he said he said don't go stay in Singapore and I asked him why is that so can you explain to me so there was one devotee and myself were waiting for Kai uh, because we were waiting for him to catch the bus and so he sat there and you can see literally he was downloading in communion with Swamiji and you know and then he basically came back with his answer because of the gas that he uh, inhaled uh, at the clinic that word not uh, enable him to be in the best space 
with oneness to do the power manifestation. So he had to rest. So when that truth was made known to me, I was able to accept that he was not able to come along to do the demo. Otherwise, I was really um, wondering why uh, the instruction came directly to Swamiji through Kai not to attend the program. So like this only, there are many, many, many fascinating incidences which I think I can only tell by writing a book. So at some point in time, I will write a book to share my experiences of raising an enlightened child, a divine child, an incarnation by His grace. So with that, I would like to conclude this video. It's just too much to share, but I'll just share some of the key fascinating experiences. When you have a child connected to an enlightened master, basically, that is the best gift any parent can give to a child because simply the Guru takes care. The Guru guides him along the path and you don't have to worry. He's always protected. He's always guided by the cosmic intelligence, by his cosmic father, cosmic mother and cosmic teacher all in one. So with that, I thank you for listening, Nityananda.